Howdy and welcome to VEG TV. I'm your host Jack. Today we're going to talk about microwaves. Well, more specifically, microwave oven. Had somebody who had a microwave go out on them and I uh, told him I wanted the old one, tear it apart and see what's happening. Last time I tore apart a microwave oven was probably about 1984. Back then it was more mechanical than it was electrical. So it's kind of interesting to see how it changed somewhat. Microwave ovens have been around for quite some time. The concept actually came out about in the 1920s now. I could be wrong on dates and times and all that stuff. So by, most definitely fact check me. But came out, uh, the, the idea was about, you know, in the 1920s, and it came about uh, as a medical need. They were, medical community, for whatever reason, was needing to heat human tissue. So the idea was born. The actual concept of cooking food came in, out during the 30s, when it was actually, food was pressed between two metal plates, and the voltage was cranked up to something like 10,000 volts or something like that. And that was that. There's uh, different bits and pieces to the microwave. And I'll show you some of those. I do not have the, uh, the case anymore. I've since disposed of that. But if you were going to repurpose a microwave, there is some pieces and parts in there that you can repurpose. The case one is being one of them. You could definitely cut it down to size and make it a project box or road sign or whatever you're into. Now the few pieces and parts that I, I did grab out of here realistically to most people and probably even to myself it's something really not um, needed I guess get a light bulb, get a handful of sheet metal screws, you get some wires, this is part of the power supply board here, and this is the, the uh, electronics front panel. This microwave, I, I don't remember the maker model. Uh, they suffered a brownout, and that was it. The microwave panel no longer illuminated. The cavity light did illuminate when you open the door, and the platter did rotate with the door open. So it's definitely uh, issues with with the microwave. So let's go ahead and uh, take a closer look at some of these parts. As stated, this right here is part of the power supply. The mains cable came into this and then went on into the transformer. I will strip this board, fuse, fuse holder, and I can't pronounce that, the toroidal, whatever. You know what it is. Strip that, and I'll, I'll check these out. These here could have went bad with the brown out, but I'm not sure. And then uh, a relay. On the control unit, we've got three lays, three relays here. We have an IC, which I suspect is probably what the problem is. 
We got some electrolytic capacitors. We got a, a reference crystal, which, let's see, if I can get frequency off of that. Eight point three eight eight six megahertz reference crystal. Piezo speaker, and then we got this daughter board here, which consists of some more electrolytics diode. That's probably also part of. Um, converting AC into DC for for this board here transformer and uh, a couple other discrete parts and then we have another IC back here which could be for uh, voltage regulation I'm not sure I haven't looked that up yet no oh. And I just noticed we got one more down here. On the back side of the board, we do have some SMD components. So realistically, any one of these components could be the culprit with this or multiple. We have some channels cut out here in the board, which is generally done for um, high voltage not to jump. Could also be for RF not jumping as well. And then we've got the actual display. Haven't, uh, of course, I haven't removed it. I'm not expecting anything to be underneath it, but you never know. Along with those parts, there is also a couple of these sensors installed. I have no idea what the sensors do. I guess further research would tell me. Maybe some kind of safety sensor in case the machine goes goofy. Then we got this aluminum piece here. I, I, I'm not sure. No, it is uh, aluminum covered cardboard is what that was. Like I said, a handful of sheet metal screws to gain access into the microwave, they had these safety screws. Which was easily defeated by these. Then we have a, a bulb Plug this into some power. Let me get you in focus. Got this plugged into my isolation transformer. I'm going to turn off my two overhead lights. And now we're just illuminated by the, the glow of the cell phone. And hit the switch on the uh, Variac. And we'll get to see a really nice glow here. Ain't that cool? Oops, hold on. Probe fell off. Okay, now that I got that put on proper. That's about 20 volts. Let's go ahead and turn that up a little bit. 
And of course, sitting in the dark, I can't see where I'm at. Let me zoom out so we can see the uh, cool glow. And that's only 50 volts. So, definitely something usable. I wonder how good this would work for a dim bulb. Nice and small. I like it. Definitely does remind you of a, a vacuum tube. Inside we also find this really massive big capacitor and this is rated at 1 microfarad at 2100 volts AC. This is definitely something you don't want to mess around with and touch. In fact if you don't know what you're doing you really don't want to get inside a microwave in general. Very lethal and they can and can kill you if not hurt you really bad. The uh, meat of the act is basically these two devices right here. We have a transformer and then we have the magnetron. The transformer is basically the bulk of your microwave. This, this thing is extremely heavy. It probably weighs 30 pounds by itself. Very heavy. and it's very dangerous. This has um, a primary and a secondary. The primary is uh, 100 and, uh, 120 volts at, uh, at 6 amps I believe. can't remember now. The secondary is over 2,000 volts ranges anywhere from 1,900 to um, 2,500 volts somewhere in there but on an average for a thousand watts it's it's 2,000 volts and it's only about a half an amp on that. The core of this transformer is a EI, so we have the E here and the I here. Really not much you could do with it in this default status. I mean you can. You can make a uh, Jacobs ladder out of this. You could also use it to zap things. 2000 volt zap. Be very careful though, you, you definitely don't want to plug it in and play with it. If you don't know what you're doing, they can kill you. Now these can be easily modified. I'm not going to do that. But you can modify them and pull the secondary out, rewind it, and give yourself uh, 120 volts at, I don't know, 800 amps. So you could definitely make yourself a, a nice um, power supply for your amateur radio. You could also modify these or use these, uh, grab a couple of them and make yourself a nice welder, spot welder or other. And then finally we've got this. It's a magnetron. Microwaves microwave oven. Some of you probably don't know that a microwave oven is realistically a transmitter. It's not a RF transmitter but what it does is in the chamber inside this chamber here, the round part, there's holes drilled through it. 
back when all this was being uh, invented and created. And by the way, the Magnetron is a UK, well, not necessarily a UK invention, but the UK is the one who, who helped develop it to what you see it is now. Uh, Ten years prior, Russia was actually working on this. Here we've got rare earth magnets. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, the, uh, the chamber here has drilled slots to it. Back in the uh, time when this was all being uh, developed, they actually used um, Colt patterns uh, to drill out the holes. So Colt, um, Colt pistols. Now this magnetron is actually a tube device, uh, a valve tube. So that's what this is. And as I was stating, uh, this is not a typical RF transmitter. This is actually a, a, uh, an oscillator. And inside those chambers that were drilled out, the, um, the electrons get pushed through those at really fast pace, high speed, and it starts to oscillate and get shot out there. Now the frequency on these um, modern ones are 10 centimeters. They've actually played with when they were all being developed anywhere from 10 megahertz on up. And in fact it was the microwave oven that actually reached the uh, centimeter band weight to uh, be able to transmit it at such high uh, power and when you see a thousand watt microwave that's exactly what it's doing it's transmitting a thousand watts all the electrons get shoved through there and shot out through here to the tube and it cooks your food and the food cooking is actually done with the uh, water mo molecules I'm not going to open this up. We're not going to look at it. There's plenty of pictures and video on the uh, interwebs if you want to check that out. The magnets are very powerful, but they're also very fragile. So it's very plausible that they'll break the first time you use them. Magnets come in handy uh, on this. What, what the magnets do is as a a um, oscillator it really doesn't do too much you introduce the magnets and then it works on the uh, principle of right angles and basically it, it wrangles the um, the electrons and helps guide it and focus it where they need to go which is through this antenna kind of neat kind of cool Back when these were originally sold, I think the first one was sold in 1947. They sold for their price, which would be equivalent of our money of $55,000. And they were big and they were heavy. They were, called a, they were called a radar range because once they were developed, the, the initial development was, like I said, for medical. This magnetron was actually developed for radar, for aircraft, for World War II. So that's how the name radar range came about. And so they just applied that. Matter of fact, it was Raytheon who went ahead and um, applied for the patents here in the States. The uh, two guys that invented or developed this magnetron from... Uh, from the UK, they actually brought it over to the United States and they gifted it to the United States in lieu of financial help for their projects. So that's kind of cool. So the um, UK and, and America, they went ahead and developed this into a, uh, helped develop into a, a modern day microwave oven. As stated, this was being developed, the, uh, the Raytheon was being developed for um, aircraft, for radar. The 
microwave oven aspect was being developed for medical. The food aspect didn't come in until, um, I think 1945 or thereabout. I can't remember his name, Percy something or another. Walked in front of the magnetron, had a chocolate bar in his pocket, and it melted. And so he started dorking with it. The first purposely cooked food off of this was a uh, was popcorn. And the second purposely cooked food was an egg. He placed an egg in front of it and had one of his uh, partners come in to view it. And the uh, egg exploded all over his partner's face. And uh, the development for food application came quickly. Anyway, that's uh, that's the ins and outs of a microwave oven. Like I said, I, I don't, I really doubt I'm going to do anything with any of this. I just thought uh, tear it apart and look at it and check it out, and uh, and that's it. Thought you'd be interested in seeing the uh, inside of a microwave, what's left of it, and a little bit of the history. I do apologize, I kind of stumbled through all that, but uh, try and remember everything and and spew it out properly. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Take care. See ya.